The first use of the concepts in nanotechnology were in There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, a talk given by physicist Richard Fenman at an American Physical Society meeting at Caltech on December 29, 1959. Fenman described a process by which the ability to manipulate individual atoms and molecules might be developed, using one set of precise tools to build and operate another proportionally smaller set. So on down to the needed scale. However, nanotechnology has been around since the Middle Ages. Here are some of the major events that have occurred in this field. One of the first uses of nanotechnology was in the Middle Ages. It was done by using gold nanoparticles to make red pigments in stained glass. Gold, when come together, appears gold, but certain sized particles, when spread out, appear different colors. The importance of nanotechnology greatly improved with the creation of the microscope by Robert Hooke, which improved a simpler microscope for viewing microbiological specimens in greater detail. The first mention of some of the distinguishing concepts in nanotechnology were made by James Clerk Maxwell when he proposed as a thought experiment a tiny entity known as Maxwell's demon that would be able to handle individual molecules. The first observations and size measurements of nanoparticles were made during the first decade of the 20th century. They are mostly associated with Richard Adolf Zygmundi, who made a detailed study of gold soles and other nanomaterials with sizes, sizes down to 10 nanometers and less. He then published a book in 1914. In the 1920s, Irving Langmuir and Catherine B. Blogget introduced the concept of a monolayer, a layer of material one molecule thick. In the early 1950s, Boris Derjaguin and Anna Abrikosova conducted the first measurement of surface forces. The topic of nanotechnology was again touched upon by There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, a talk given by physicist Richard Feynman at an American Physical Society meeting at Caltech, and during this meeting, he proposed two challenges to the public and a reward of $1,000 for the winner of each challenge. The first challenge proposed by Richard Feynman involved the construction of a nanomotor, which was completed by William McClellan in 1960. Gordon Moore made the astounding prediction that the number of transistors that could be fit into a given area would double every 18 months for the next 10 years, which became known as Moore's Law. The term nanotechnology was first defined by Norio Taniguchi of the Tokyo Science University as follows. Nanotechnology mainly consists of the processing of of separation, consolidation, and deformation of materials by one atom or one molecule. Since that time, the definition of nanotechnology has generally been extended to include features as large as 100 nanometers. Additionally, the idea that nanotechnology embraces structures exhibited, exhibiting quantum mechanical aspects such as quantum dots has further evolved its definition. The process of atomic layer deposition for depositing uniform thin l films of uh, one atomic layer at a time was developed and patented by Dr. Tuomo Suntalo and co-workers in fin Finland. Its layer-by-layer -layer growth mechanism produces high-quality materials with uniform features. ALD films are superior in applications where film properties like step coverage or pinhole free structure or dielectric strength are essential. Nanotechnology and nanoscience got a boost in the early 1980s with two major developments, the birth of cluster science and the invention of the scanning tunneling microscope. This development led to the discovery of fullerenes, objects made completely of carbon molecules, in 1985 and the structural assignment of carbon molecules a few years later. In another development, the synthesis and properties of semiconductor nanocrystals were studied. This led to a fast increasing number of semiconductor nanoparticles of quantum dots. 
the idea of nanotechnology as deterministic rather than stochastic handling of individual atoms and molecules was conceptually explored in depth by Dr. K. Eric Drexler, who promoted the technological significance of nanoscale phenomena in devices through speeches and his books, Engines of Creation, The Coming Era of Nanotechnology, and Nanosystems, Molecular Machinery, Manufacturing, and Computation. Drexler, Drexler's vision of nanotechnology is often called molecular nanotechnology, or MNT. The second challenge proposed by Richard Fenman involved the possibility of scaling down letters small enough so as to be able to fit the entire Encyclopedia Britannica on the head of a pin, which was completed by Tom Newman in 1985. Hoffman and Kreishmer of the University of Arizona discovered how to synthesize and purify large quantities of fullerenes. This opened the door to their characterization and functionalization by hundreds of investigators in government and industrial laboratories. At a meeting of the Materials Research Society in 1992, Dr. T. Ebsen described to a spellbound audience his discovery and characterization of carbon nanotubes using the same or similar tools as those used by Huffman and Krishmer. Hundreds of researchers further developed the field of nanotube-based nanotechnology. The practice of nanotechnology embraces both stochastic approaches in which, for example, super molecular chemistry creates waterproof pants and deterministic approaches wherein single molecules created by stochastic chemistry are manipulated on substrate surfaces by de deterministic methods comprising of nudging them with STM or AFM probes and causing simple binding or cleavage reactions to occur. The dream of a complex deterministic molecular nanotechnology remains elusive. Since the mid-1990s, thousands of surf surface scientists and thin-film technorats have latched onto the nanotechnology bandwagon and re redefined their disciplines as nanotechnology. This has caused much confusion in the, f in the field and has spawned thousands of nanopapers on the peer-reviewed literature. For the future, some means has to be found for MNT design evolution at the nanoscale which mimics the process of biological evolution at the molecular scale. Biological evolution proceeds by random variation in ensemble averages of organisms combined with culling of the less successful variants and reproducing of the more successful variants, and macroscale engineering design also produces proceeds by a process of design evolution from simplicity to the complexity as set forth by John Gale. A complex system that works in is invariably found to have evolved from a simple system that worked. A complex system designed from scratch never works and cannot be patched up to make it work. You have to start over, beginning with a system that works. Due to the far-ranging claims that have been made about potential applications of nanotechnology, a number of serious concerns have been raised about what effect these will have on our society if realized, and what actions, if any, is appropriate to mitigate these risks. One area of concern is the effect that industrial-scale manufacturing and use of nanomaterials would have on human health and the environment, as suggested by nanotechnology research. Groups such as the Center of Responsible Nanotechnology have advocated that nanotechnology should be specially regulated by governments for those reasons. Other counter that overregulation would stifle, stifle uh, scientific research and the development of innovations would, which could greatly benefit mankind. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health is conducting research on how nanoparticles interact with the body's systems and how workers might be exposed to nano-sized particles in the manufacturing or industrial use of nanomaterials. NIOSH offers interim guidelines for working with nanomaterials consistent with the best scientific knowledge. Longer-term concerns center on the implications that new technologies will have for society at large, and whether these could possibly lead to either a post-scarcity economy or alternatively exacerbate the wealth gap between develop developing nations and developed. 
the effect of nanotechnology on the society as a whole, on human health and the environment, on trade, on security, on food systems, and even on the definition of human, have not been characterized or politicized. But once they are, our world will greatly benefit and our understanding of nanotechnology will be far greater than it is today.